Good afternoon. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the Antichrist, and I'd like to talk about what you can expect, comparing with Scripture, so you will know how to discern between the Christ and the Antichrist. We've been talking about this for some time, how Satan will plan a deception by which those who are watching for Jesus to come first, he will not come, but instead the Antichrist will come in his place. So let's go over, I have ten reasons biblically why you can expect, you can uh, discern, rather, uh, between one and the other. Number one, of course, I have the timing of it. We know that the Antichrist comes first from places like Matthew 24, 29, uh, chapter 24, verses 29 to 31. So we will know that he will come first. Of course, we will be expecting the Antichrist and the return of Christ. And so we'll have to discern that. Of course, we've been talking about that. When this comes, the deception will be very powerful, very convincing. So you will need some other reasons, too, to help you. Number two, the world will rejoice. This will be on the heels of World War III. They will think that God himself has come to save the planet and extend his hand. The world will rejoice. But the Bible says that when Jesus comes, the earth will mourn, that the earth will wail. We see this in places like Revelation 1, verse 7. And again, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Number three, something a lot of you may remember. The beast will, have, will end up having a deadly head wound, which will be healed. This could be an assassination attempt from someone who doesn't believe. One way or another, it will be something to convince the world that this is the real deal. So this is Revelation 13, verse 3. So when you know this, you will say, uh-oh. This isn't Jesus. That's not a part of his return. Number four, the Antichrist will embrace all religions. As we have said before, when this false return takes place, there are numerous other religions that are looking for their Messiah to come back. But Jesus said he is the only way in John 14, 6, and again, his is the only name in Acts 4, 12. Because so many people today might just think all religions are the same, or all God, God is the same with just different names. So as this being embraces all religions so that they will worship him, you will know this is not the Jesus of the Bible. Number five, I put he will espouse evolution. Perhaps some of you haven't studied it like I have. It's really rather a common sense thing, but science has actually solidly disproven evolution. Evolution is actually anti-science. It violates dozens, if not hundreds, of scientific laws. There is no evidence that uh, we evolved, and it comes down to even the start. It's the first two rules, the first two laws of thermodynamics. It violates. You don't get something from nothing. You either believe in God or you believe that nothing created everything. Now, scripturally, we will see uh, Hebrews 11.3. That God created all out of nothing, and we believe that by faith. And also Romans chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, predicts how, in the end, the world will be turned toward evolution. Number six, there will be a false mark, the false mark of the Antichrist versus uh, the good mark of God. I say that because in a couple places in Scripture, one place is in Ezekiel, I don't remember exactly where, but at the end, in Revelation 22.4, it says that God will put his name on their foreheads. Now, this is in the New Jerusalem. This is after everything is done. He will put his name on their foreheads. However, the Antichrist will be saying on the right hand or on the forehand, this will be a number. It is the number of a man. So this is a little different. And obviously, also, the Antichrist is saying that if you do not have his number, you will not be able to buy or sell, which means if you can't make what you need, the money you need for a living, you won't be able to eat. So a very distinct difference between the two marks. Number seven, he will promote the God of forces. This is Daniel from chapter, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 38. It says in his estate, he will honor the God of forces. That is, the belief that God is a force and not a person. This is indeed the Star Wars 
force. It's kind of thinking that everything in the everything on earth is a part of God and that a force kind of emanates from it. Most of them would think that he is a force in all living things. But this is uh, the Antichrist will push this idea forward, uh, trying to change the view that we have had of God. Number eight, he will gain control using flatteries. We see this again from Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 and 32. Uh, his doctrine is a very flattering one. He will flatter the leaders of the world. He will flatter them before mankind, saying how insightful they have been to be stat working to establish a world government ahead of this crisis. He will flatter mankind by saying he is already a part of God and in the process of becoming God. Uh, you can look for this. Jesus did not do this. In John 7:7, 7, 7, Jesus said that the world hated him because he testified of it that its works were evil. A flattering tongue worketh ruin. So look for this as a sign of the Antichrist. Number nine, you might ask yourself, would Jesus kill those that don't take the mark? Which is essentially what will happen. They will either, either be killed outright or they will not be allowed to buy and sell. There may be some at the beginning it will look like he's taking people to re-education camps. This is a speculation on my part. He may not appear to be that mass murderer. Okay, but would Jesus kill those? Would he kill those that disagree with him? I mean, you can even see in, in different places where people rejected Jesus as Messiah, he still worked miracles among them, as he alluded to in Matthew 11, verse 20. So here I just put Matthew 5.44 as your reference that you will love your enemies. We all know that. <clears throat> and number 10, I have the pride of the beast. How proud he will be. Uh, the scripture says that he will show himself to all that he is God. He will exalt himself above all gods and above all people. Is that what Jesus did? The answer is no. Jesus was very humble. As far as the reference to the pride of the beast, I again have Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 and 37, and also 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4. As for the humility of Jesus, I have Luke chapter 22, verses 25 to 27, and Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 8. As you can see again, the key to resisting this, this dark time will be to know the Word of God, to believe it, and to act upon it. If you do this, all will be well eternally. It will be a dark time on earth in many ways, but the bright light of the gospel will shine forever in our hearts. May the Lord bless you.